and welcome. Thank you for joining us with this tutorial. This tutorial will take you through every step needed to craft this armored corset with leather. If you would like to build along, you can get the pattern or the full suit bundle at the Prince Armory Academy. Or as always, feel free to follow along for the crafting tips that you can use in your projects or even just for entertainment. As with many of our designs, this is a scalable pattern presented on one oversized page. To print with any common printer, simply use the Tiled Pages option or other similar option in your PDF Reader app of choice. To construct the patterns, you can trim away the margins and tape the pages together into one large sheet and cut them out from there. Or you can cut the individual pieces first and tape them together afterwards as shown. Just take your time and be careful with alignment. Hello, I'm Ash, and I'll be your guide through this tutorial. I'll take most of it from here. The materials being used in this project include vegetable tan leather, double capped rivets, dye, acrylic finish, and some paint. For this project, I'm using a nine ounce full side. There's a lot of pieces to this, so plan your materials accordingly. Leather is more stiff and firm along the back split, so I prioritize the torso pieces along here and the cut parts closer to the neck to make shaping easier. All you really need for tools is something to cut the leather and a striking tool like a hammer to set the rivets. Any visual enhancement steps requiring other tools are completely optional. Next, I'll need to cut out the parts. I've started by trimming away the excess leather with a retractable knife to make cutting individual pieces easier. Wetting the leather will make it softer and easier to cut. To cut out the pieces, I mostly used leather shears. The Imperial Knight series is predominantly designed to be laser cutter friendly, but the larger projects, like these breastplates, will be too big for most non-professional laser cutters, so I'll be demonstrating this process by hand. I used an edge beveler from Weaver to round off all the edges. Be sure to strop your beveler every now and then to keep it sharp. Many of the tools and materials featured in this video were provided by Weaver Leather. They are a sponsor of this channel and their support helps in creating these videos for everyone. Weaver Leather is a major supplier for all things leather craft, so when you're ready for your next build, check out their online store packed full of awesome tools and leather crafting supplies. You can find our affiliate link below in the description. I decided to run the edge slicker over all the pieces to burnish the edges for a cleaner look. A quick pass on quality leather is enough to give a reasonably smooth and clean look. You can take it to a higher degree, but there are a lot of parts in this armor project, so you have to decide if that's really where you want to spend your time. Next, I wet the leather to prepare it for tooling. I took great joy in soaking this leather because it was so squealy. I decided I wanted a wider border than what is shown in the pattern. I'm using a compass to score even lines around the edges of the pieces. There are no rules for this, and we encourage you to think outside the box. The patterns are meant to be a useful starting point, so don't feel constrained. I say, do whatever makes you happy. Colors, paints, tooling, and such are all a matter of personal preference, and you are free to go with anything you can imagine. After carving out my lines, I used a basic smooth beveling stamp to define my edge border. I then used a bone fid to blend and refine the edges. Working with leather can be more like sculpting clay than you'd expect. I'm using a common texture stamp to make the borders pop. I'll start by making one deeper pass along the border and then some lighter passes further out from the border to fade the effect.
Acetylene leather can cause some stretching that can gradually throw off ideal hole alignment during the assembly. So I waited until after the tooling to punch the holes. I'm holding the patterns directly over the pieces and using a rotary hand punch to make the holes. However, it's easy to shift the patterns around as you punch the holes. So I actually suggest just marking the holes first and then punching them out. One additional step that you might consider while you are at this stage is to skive the underlapping edges of all the parts. This will make assembly a little bit easier, but it will make a big difference if you plan on wearing this straight on flesh, as it will taper the inside edges for more comfort. You could also consider lining the piece with garment leather, but if you're not sure how to do that, we'd have to cover that in a different video. I'm soaking the cut pieces to prepare them for wet molding. Before that though, there are many similar small parts which can easily be mixed up. And after shaping it, it's not so easy to overlay the patterns to check which is which. So I marked each piece and put an arrow indicating which was up on each piece and separated left from right. Your goal with shaping is to wet the individual pieces while they're still small and easy to work with. This will make assembly easier and it will improve the visual results of your projects. If you have never formed leather before, you'll want to wait until your leather has firmed up after drying a bit, but still dampen the core so it will hold its shape when formed. To accomplish this curve shape, you'll need something to bend it around. You can use something as simple as a baseball or a billiard ball. I personally like to stand up while I'm doing this for better leverage and point of view. You only need a bit of dome shape on each piece to start and you can clean up the shape as you progress through the assembly process. You can shape the leather incrementally in small passes. It's better to overshape it a little bit than to not shape it enough because the leather has a bias towards its original position and can be stretched back easier if need be. Because there's so much shaping involved with this project, I decided it was better to assemble it before dyeing and finishing it. That way I could still have the freedom of wet molding it where I needed it. I'll be keeping the leather damp and pliable through the build to make it easier. I began the assembly by riveting right down the center of each cup. You may need to raise up your anvil and or setter to account for the curving of the shape. If you don't have any tools to elevate your parts while setting rivets as I have here, you can always turn the pieces over and set them flat from the back with a hammer. Now I will start enclosing the cup parts into their permanent shape. Starting from the side towards the center of the body, I'll work my way out and rivet the cup pieces together and skip the last hole on the outside. You'll set that later. Did you know we have an excellent Discord community packed full of other makers and leather crafters? It's basically a modern chat room and a way to connect with fellow students and experts. It's a great place to share your work, talk shop, and to get tips and feedback. And if you get stuck during a build or want inspiration from other crafters, this can be a great resource. Check the link below and join us in the Discord app or via a web browser.
From here on out, make sure to pay special attention to which parts are left and right. The next piece to assemble is the bridge between the cuff and the torso. Starting at the center again, work your way out and rivet the surrounding piece towards the center. A super helpful tool in this project is an awl. I use it to help align and stretch the rivet holes to make setting rivets easier. Just remember that the leather doesn't necessarily want to be in the shape of an armored corset. It's fairly happy staying completely flat, so expect some resistance in getting complex shapes to line up during assembly. Some of the rivets will be snug against the overlapping parts. Just pry back the overlapping layer a bit and sneak the rivet in. In the next phase of the assembly, I started with the center stomach pieces and then added the under bust section. Quick note here, if you have the pre-order version of this pattern, be aware that the final version of the pattern will have some adjusted hole placements and will vary slightly from this video guide. Next, I'm adding the front side pieces. You could start on either side, top or bottom.
I would consider this project somewhere in the intermediate range because of the number of layers and the shaping required for optimal results. This video focuses primarily on the assembly, but there will be a quick start guide to cover many of the basics and answer many common questions, but remember this video is part of a series and many of the basics have been covered in previous videos. It may also require an additional effort to get the fit and shape just right for each intended wear. There will be a separate video that will discuss how to fit and customize the shape to fit a variety of body types. At this point, you should start to see the corset shaping taking place as it comes together. Definitely a configuration option for this pattern is an underbust corset. You would have to adjust the back accordingly, but it wouldn't be too difficult. I personally love it and I might have to make one for myself. Leave a comment if you think I should make a video on that. Next, I assembled the front collar pieces and worked on the shape a bit. Now we come to the primary assembly of the front torso. I begin by attaching the cups to the top collar assembly. I'm still keeping everything damp to help the shape settle into its proper form. Another thing to consider with this project is a break-in period. I definitely suggest wearing this piece at home for a good while, even off and on over a number of days, before debuting it at a convention or other event. Armored pieces made with vegetable tan leather can be very rigid at first, but give it time and it will mold to your body. As you can probably see, this design has a lot of potential for modularity. Just the bust and the collar could be a bra top style or just add the midsection for another crop top style configuration with very little tweaking. That is something we can make a video covering. Please be sure to leave a comment and a like on the video letting us know. After this stage, if need be, you can wet mold the cups and collar more into shape. I wet the leather just a bit at the bottom to pop the bottom part of the cup out and help it blend and flow into the shape of the lower section. I then attach the midsection to the top. Again, you may have to make some adjustments to your anvil and or setter for easier assembly. I set mine up high in order to deal with all the bulk and curves. Next is the back assembly. It should be pretty straightforward and a breeze compared to the front. I started by attaching the collar pieces and moving to the center and back sides. Again, it may help to keep your leather slightly damp through this process for easier shaping after assembly. You can always do a lot of shaping when the assembly is done, but it's good practice to train the leather as you go into the ideal final shape. As you assemble, the pieces will be forced into shape and it might look a little lumpy or misshapen, but just trust the process and keep going. Use leverage to line up the holes with force if needed. If you can form this over the body of the intended wearer, that might make things a bit easier, but either way, just take your time to work out the shape.
that's looking pretty good, but there's still some work to do. All that's left to assemble are the side pieces for the back. Just keep riveting the pieces together as shown. Now that the assembly is finished, it should be roughly in its final shape, but the design can only get you about 90% there, and you will have to smooth and blend the shapes by hand for the optimal outcome. For the color on this project, I'll be starting by dyeing it all black, and I'll be coming back with paint for the trim. Since it's already assembled, I'm going to grab a few applicators so I can get into all the crevices, but mostly I'll be using a dense sponge. I chose to dye both the outside and the inside, but that's optional. If you do dye the inside, be sure you also use a generous amount of finish after to set the dye and keep it from coming off on your skin or other clothing. You might have noticed one of the pieces had a bit of a head start since someone spilled some dye on it. Well, you were gonna dye it black anyway, so I, I call that helping. After the dye dried, I finished both sides with a coat of Super Sheen. Definitely keep an eye out for drips. If you have the option, it's great to let the piece dry on a dress form, especially if it's a body double or configured similar to the wearer's dimensions. For the finishing touches, I used a color shifting powder pigment from a company called Solar Color Dust. I love this one for its multiple color shifts and brilliant sparkle. I experimented with a few processes to get it right, but this video is already pretty long, so I don't think I'll go into depth here. But should I make a separate video on this painting process? Weigh in below in the comments and let me know. We do read all of our comments and try to respond to as many as we can. We're using pre-cut panels of 7 to 8 ounce Weaver Select Veggie Tan Leather for the buckle straps. Most of the components are laser friendly, but this project, along with the male breastplate, has larger pieces than what most people will have access to. So that's why we cut the pieces out by hand in this tutorial, but the buckle straps can definitely still be cut by laser. Just being able to cut out a set of buckle straps makes having the laser cutter worth it in my opinion. Just as a reminder, if you plan on getting a Glowforge yourself, you can use our affiliate code PRINCEARMORY to save up to $500 off of your purchase. Of course I needed buckles to match these cool colored rivets, so with a quick search I found these on Amazon. You can also find rainbow rivets there too. We'll add some links for you below. If you have the option, have an assistant help you mark the hole locations for your buckles. There is some flexibility in where you place the buckles, just make sure to use at least three per side and be sure to accurately mirror the sides. When equipping the piece, you might consider cinching the buckles tight in the middle and only snug to loose at the top and bottom.
If you enjoyed this tutorial, you might also like the female breastplate tutorial from the Fantasy Armor theme, or consider checking out the standard breastplate from this Imperial Knight theme, or visit the Academy for many more patterns, tutorials, and more. Thanks for joining us in this tutorial. Until next time.